Hey guys, and how about we watch a death battle, Chuck Norris vs. Sagata Sanjiro. So of course, make sure to click here to go to the official release, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, then come back here and we'll watch it together. So I don't know Sagata, but I am somewhat familiar with Chuck Norris, because I was, believe it or not, a school kid at one point in time. And you know, it happens to be during the time where the Chuck Norris jokes were big. Like, did you know that Chuck Norris's tears can cure cancer? Too bad he never cries. Things like that. You know, basically, it's like you just take the impossible and you apply it to one man who is very proficient with roundhouse kicks. I only know a little bit about Segata because of what my younger brother has told me, and apparently he was like the mascot for the Sega Saturn, and if people weren't playing the Sega Saturn, Segata would show up and like kick their butts or something, you know, he would also do these kind of wacky impossible things, um, in a supposedly really amiable way. He's a likable character, but I haven't seen anything yet for myself. But I was genuinely surprised when this matchup was presented during the live stream of the remastered Boba Fett vs. Samus Aran. Um, so I'm, I'm really rather looking forward to this. It's gonna be really cool. At first I thought it was two actual people, you know, Chuck vs. Segata, but apparently, again, Segata is the character. Um, still, it's gonna be really awesome. I look forward to it. And since I have nothing more to say, let's get to watching. Here we go, Chuck Norris vs. Sagata Sanshiro. All tales of superhuman feats have existed for as long as man has been telling stories. Well, of course. And today we pit the greatest of these legends in a clash of East meets West. Oh wow. <laughs> Chuck Norris. No real introduction needed. Right. And Sagata Sanshiro. Sagata Sanshiro. The Sega Saturn of all things. <laughs> East West and I'm and it's our job to analyze their weapons, oh. armor, and skills oh. to find out who would win. World of Warcraft, death. that's fun. In case you're wondering, I don't know In what the sprites are based China, on. There was a legend that one day a child would be born from a dragon and vanquish evil from the land. That man is not Chuck Norris, because <laughs> Chuck Norris killed that man. Oh. <laughs> Carlos Ray Norris, yes, that's his real name, was oh. born to a humble family in 1940. A loner, mediocre student, and all-around physically unintimidating. Is this actually like a, a biography? His was pitiful. That is until he answered the call of his country, ah, joined good the man, United good States man. military, and began training in martial arts. From the day he threw his first punch, his life was changed forever. Turns out Chuck <laughs> is unnaturally gifted in the ways of violence. Oh. After his military career, he wandered America for 10 years battling in martial arts competition. Really? He racked up 183 victories, held the professional middleweight karate championship title for six years, and became the first Westerner in the history of Taekwondo to earn the eighth degree black belt. Wow. But he didn't I stop didn't know that there. was a thing. Chuck achieved black belt status in five additional disciplines. Hang Sudo, Karate, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and even one he created. <laughs> what? Taekwondo. <laughs> Close, it's actually Chun Kuk Do, or Universal Way. Oh, well. Chuck harnesses the powers of the universe to achieve superhuman feats. Hmm. With one hand, I can crush coal into a diamond. <laughs> so impressed at himself, he hired a team of filmmakers to document his life of newfound powers. Mm. Some of these real life accounts include the Delta Force, Walker, Texas Ranger, and Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Just to name a few. <laughs> Animation. According to these archives, They're still gonna Chuck claim it, though. commands so hard that he does six backflips, fire more bullets from a machine gun than it can actually hold without reloading, and even transform into fucking animals. Whoa. <laughs> I like that they're mixing the fiction with, you know, reality. Why doesn't he do that more often? Because the most dangerous animal in the world is Chuck is Norris. Chuck, Norris. <laughs> Chuck has taken his already unprecedented abilities even further through over 35 years of intense training on his secret weapon, the Total Gym. Ah. He even had to create his own pants with a secret gusset to keep them from exploding off his body due to his sheer <laughs> kicking power. He calls them... Chuck Norris, action, <laughs> action <genes. laughs> Naturally, powers like these have spawned hundreds, no, thousands of myths describing what Chuck Norris is capable of, mm. making it very difficult to separate fact from fiction. That is, until Chuck released a book officially chronicling 101 <laughs> of his favorite feats. Fact number wow. 67. When Chuck Norris does push-ups, he pushes the earth down. Fact number 95, Chuck Norris is so fast he can run around the world and punch himself in the back of the head. Whoa. Fact number 80, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, Chuck Norris can roundhouse kick you yesterday. <laughs> Fact number 71, scientists have estimated that the energy given off by the Big Bang was roughly equivalent to one CNRK. 
Second Norse Roundhouse Kick. Roundhouse <laughs> yes, I call. And those are just a few of the ones that we know are true. This Death Battle's amazing addition, so far. Legend has it that beneath his magnificent beard lies a third fist. Chuck is as tough as they come, or rather tougher. Once, after being beaten unconscious and buried underground inside a truck, oh, he revived himself with a beer shower and miraculously drove the truck out of the earth. <laughs> He's proficient with many different vehicles, speedboats, helicopters, a motorcycle that shoots rockets, and weaponized dolphins. But of course. Whom he can communicate with. I'll take care of Angel Fish, and you guys make sure no one gets out of here. He also See, I didn't know that that show was a thing at all. He's ready for anything, even a giant alligator parachuting in through a window. He also put together a team of heroes and saved the world on multiple occasions. This guy really is all that is man. But don't mistake unrelenting masculinity for perfection. Despite Why not? His impressive martial arts record, he's still suffered a total of 10 losses. And that's not mm. to mention his massive amount of chest hair. Although infinite and a source of power, it makes him easily grabbable and even once aided in his own, you know, death at the hands of Bruce Lee. Oh no! Luckily for Chuck, death itself fears him, so he just kind of kept going. Oh! In all our years of research, that makes sense, we've yeah. never found an opponent worthy enough to take on the roundhouse kicking, beard punching Until... Texas Ranger. Until now. Yes! <laughs> I heard another rumor. That you were bitten by a king cobra? Yeah, I was. But after five days of agonizing pain, the cobra died. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's Chuck Norris. <laughs> ah, I'm enjoying this one. Japanese folklore hosts a plethora of. Oh, it's a big tale. skeleton. Raiden, the god of thunder, devours the stomachs of children. Kappas, monsters that dwell in rivers, drown their victims and rip their souls out their anus. Ah! And then there's the legend of the Karate Master, who will beat you within an inch of your life if you aren't playing a Sega Saturn. Yep, yep. His name That's all is I know. Sega to Sanjiro. <laughs> Men. <laughs> Women. Sega to Sanjiro. Children. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Nobody is safe from Sega's wrath. In 1997, Sega's latest console, the Sega Saturn, was failing. Oh, Nintendo no. was dominating the market, and things seemed bleak for this once great video game titan. That is, until a mysterious stranger appeared with a plan so crazy, it just might work. He'd travel the land and beat the shit out of anyone not playing a Saturn. <laughs> and it Which is the work. weirdest so advertising thing. Alongside the hospitalization of Japanese youth. But not much is known about this mysterious savior. We do know mm. that when he appeared, he had a giant Sega Saturn strapped to his back, which he uses to train his physical and gaming prowess at the same time. And he appears to be dating Sakura from Sakura Wars. Yes, he is somehow dating a video game character. Props well, to him. I'm not surprised because this guy has done some pretty amazing things. <laughs> He's kicked a baseball for a home run, raced over 60 miles per hour on ice, barefoot, what? and won the World Cup by throwing a player into the ball to score the winning goal. <laughs> he is a master of disguise and breaking and entering. He can duplicate and resize himself an unlimited number of times. Unlimited. And once took down an entire club filled with people in only three moves. But his favorite and most powerful technique is his earth-shattering judo throw, which can make his victims explode upon impact <laughs> twice. Twice. In just a few short years, Segata had successfully terrorized his entire homeland into loving Sega's floundering console. Sales even surpassed those of the Nintendo 64. So naturally, the big end got jealous and launched a huge ass missile at Sega's headquarters. <gasps> oh, corporate squabbles. But Segata, who apparently resides on the roof of the Sega HQ, well, what, where else would he be? World, his most impressive feat of all. <laughs> he just straight up left off the building onto the missile and stopped it against a glass window. <laughs> then flipped it around and rode it into space. A missile of that size would travel around 3,600 miles per hour, something that no window pane in the could music. possibly withstand. Just to stop it without cracking the glass, Segata would have had to make the missile weigh less than it should upon contact with him. Mm. The only possible explanation is that Segata is simply exempt from the laws of physics and theoretically capable of almost anything, such as surviving the vacuum of space. Oh. Well, so we didn't until the missile blew up and he died. Ah. Segata-san, Shiro, wa kimi tachi no kokoro ni.
<laughs> he died? <laughs> or did he? <gasps> the departing words from the Japanese commercial announcer claims that Segato will always live on in our hearts. But also, he lived on in, you know, the regular way. Well, most oh. are blinded by the tears of sadness in their eyes. If you look closely, you'll see what appears to be a shooting star. Or, Segato re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> but don't just take my word for it. One year after his supposed death, a strangely similar looking man appeared in the game Rent a Hero number one. Hmm. He mentored the main character in the ways of martial arts while claiming to have once been a great hero himself. Then in 2012, as Sonic and friends competed in the race of ages, a man bearing a giant Sega Saturn on his back was seen steering a missile away from the track. But the most irrefutable evidence of all came in 2013 when Sega de Sanjiro himself crashed a Sega Sound Unit concert and performed his own theme song live on stage. All video footage was destroyed, but we were able to recover a few surprisingly high quality pictures. Surprisingly. <laughs> and as of the February 2015 issue of Archie's Sonic the Hedgehog comic, a familiar looking judo master fought the blue blur in a tournament on Mobius, which is our own Earth 3000 years in the future. Oh, I didn't know that. One logical conclusion. Sega is not only alive, he's immortal. Yeah. Death may not hmm. be able to conquer Segata, but he in turn has difficulties against the death of others, specifically club zombies. And ultimately, while he successfully revived the Saturn, his skills were not enough to keep Sega on top forever. Hmm. Perhaps the reason he remains shadowed in anonymity is that he is biding his time, waiting for the right moment to step into the light and rescue Sega yet again. God oh. knows they need him now more than ever. Regardless, it's safe to say that all should heed Segata's parting words. Or else. Segata don't shoot! Gotcha! Alright. Ready to pause all it now. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! And pause. Right. I don't think I'm gonna be talking about this for too long because right now I'm thinking that Segata has this one. Chuck Norris is incredible. Incroyable. That was really bad French, I think. Um, but I don't know why. <laughs> but I I don't think Segata is just he's Segata Sanchiro, you know? That's what comes to my mind, just with the multiple um, you know, like the clones, he can multiply himself like infinitely apparently. He's immortal, he lived three thousand years in the future after surviving a like missile explosion while in space and then surviving re-entry and impact, you know. I'm sure Chuck Norris can pull off amazing things, but it seems like with what I recall them telling me, Segata has survived impossible things, whereas Chuck Norris was more- Like the King Cobra thing, he survived that, and yeah, it's pretty much impossible, but not entirely. Like, it's extraordinary, I wouldn't say it's impossible. Um, so I- I'm really- I'm really excited to see this fight. I think the Segata has this one. I could keep going back and forth between their feats, but with how just out of the world their feats are, it, it seems like it'd kind of be pointless. Um, I know I'm going to be satisfied either way with who wins, but I'm thinking Sanchiro is going to win this one. Oh, I put him on backwards. So, with that, play. Hey, I am. Uh, this is going to be fun. We'll return to Delta Force right after these messages. I still love you, Chuck, by the way. I think you're going to lose, but I love you. Chuck, you got to play the Sega Saturn. Uh-oh. He waited too long. Or maybe this is exactly what he wanted. I want to see the Earth explode or something. <laughs> you come back in here. I'm gonna hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for that. Better move. Oh, good. Okay. It's music. The third fist. <laughs> that was great. That was great how they worked that in too. There goes that. <sighs> uh oh. 
Uh oh. I'll root for you here, Chuck. I believe in you. You can survive this. Hey, he's giant. <laughs> yes, the earth is well, not exploded, but destroyed. <sighs> You gotta put it back together. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. There goes the galaxy. <laughs> Gonna survive a black hole. All the other death battles. What? Apocalyptic! <laughs> Holy shit, that was awesome! But who won? I don't know. Were they evenly matched? I think they're still going. Our instruments just can't pick them up anymore. I believe they might have ripped a hole in space-time. That's so what it looks like. they either traveled to another dimension, or completely destroyed their plane of existence. Well. Or both. Well, God have mercy on wherever they ended up. I guess this one just kind of spaced out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Next time on. That was much better than just Segata winning. That was a fantastic ending. I didn't even think that they could both win. I forget that draws are actually a thing sometimes. Oh, it's you! Nightmare. Aww. I'm Guts. Against Guts, apparently. Thanks for introducing yourself. Okay, yeah, I thought Nightmare was from Soul Calibur. I didn't know the other one at all. So. <sighs> if you guys enjoyed the episode, I mean, come on, how could you not? You, you Please had to. like, share with your friends, and subscribe. And if you want to know about more weird characters, check out our latest Who Is All About the Green Lantern. You should go check and it out. Don't forget to register for you can click both the annotations. SGC right now. Go to sgconvention.com and pre-register for the biggest gaming party ever. We'll be there. <laughs> Thank you for watching. All right, making sure that's it. Okay, now I think that's it. So I was totally wrong in my prediction, and I am totally thrilled that I am, because that ending was fantastic, you know? And it solves the issue, I believe, of people arguing about who, between two invincible, two invincible people, who would actually win. That was so much fun, it was so amusing, I love the, like, you could, I think it's safe to say that this was a joke battle, just in the sense that the, the legends, they're a joke in, in a great way. I don't mean like in a pathetic way. I mean, they're hilarious. That's what it's for. It's for the comedy. It's like I said, it was like the running thing, you know, in my school at the time when I was in school, you know, the Chuck Norris jokes and they were fantastic. You know, we didn't think any less of Chuck Norris and I, I imagine people didn't think any less of, you know, Sanshiro. And it was, they, they made this a lot of fun. I love the fact, the fact that they were able to like, you know, keep a straight face, so to speak, while doing all of this. Um, that they were able to actually present, you know, like, both facts and fiction and just kind of blend it in this, like, super awesome way. The animation I thought was fantastic. Um, like, I, I often say that, you know, 2D and 3D, it, no, one is not better than the other, but typically I do enjoy the 3D animation more, but this one was so good! You know, both in how fluid it was and just in how creative it was. It was, I loved it. It was really nice. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking up some of Segata Sanchiro's, like, commercials now, uh, and 
I'm gonna enjoy myself. I know I am. I mean, that kind of just sums it all up. I thought this was really funny. A really well-made death battle. I love the humor in it. And just, again, the whole straight-facedness. It was great. So Wiz and Boomstick did a great job. Zack, I believe, he did a fantastic job, I believe, with this um, animation. I don't know how much of it is scripted. Like, how much they tell... You know, Ben and um, Chad, how much they tell the animator to do, or whether they just say, we're going for this kind of thing, see what you can come up with. But either way, it was really enjoyable to watch. It was a very fun death battle, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. So feel free to tell me what you thought in the comments, but remember to be nice, be respectful. I'm fine with everyone having their own opinions, but we don't want to be hostile about it. So just, you know, comment, but be cool. And with all that, thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, of course, feel free to like, comment, and if you even subscribe. It means a lot. It really helps me out, and I would love to have you guys. So, tune in next time for my next video. And until then, take care. Cue outro, go!